What's this button? Do? Don't, Ooh, don't, don't touch no. that. Believe it. Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The following program, the Rewind Sports 60, is sponsored by Jerry Riles and to the extent applicable, his guests. The views and opinions expressed therein do not necessarily reflect those of News Web Radio Company or its management. The Rewind Sports 60. 60. From the city of big shoulders, the jewel of the Midwest, comes a sports show that's one of a kind. One of a kind. From iconic players to iconic stadiums to iconic teams, this is my kind of town. Chicago! And the Rewind Sports 60 is my kind of show. From Air Jordan to Sweetness to Papa Bear Hallis, this city works hard but plays even harder. Danny Carlino and Jerry Riles bring you the Rewind Sports 60. Live, live, live. Rewind the Rewind Sports, Sports 60. 60 starts now. now. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Rewind Sports 60. We're broadcasting live from the illustrious studios of WCPT, 820 AM, in the beautiful, beautiful city of Chicago. This is the Rewind Sports 60. We're streaming live on Facebook Live, both, both on WCPT 820. Go to Facebook. And also, the Rewind Sports 60. The Rewind Sports 60. Streaming live on Facebook Live. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for the fastest hour in sports conversation. Yours truly, Jerry Riles. If you want to be a part of this Easter Sunday broadcast here at WCPT, please feel free to give us a ring. 773-763-9278-773-763-WCPT. 773 and let's get to it. The gentleman in the studio. Happy holidays to both of my good buddies and partners and colleagues of the Rewind Sports 60. Ladies and gentlemen, he's on Milwaukee Avenue. He's on Dundee. He may be on Michigan Avenue. Or how about State Street? Maybe you'll check him out on the South Side on Sawyer, South Bishop, Ashland Avenue. Or as I said, Milwaukee. On the north side, Jefferson Park, the studios of WCPT. Ladies and gentlemen, you love him. He's the one. He's the only. He's the best in the business. He's the man on the street. Marty B. How are you, Marty? Good afternoon, Jerry, and my colleague, Dan Marber. It's great to be here, and you're right. I could pop up anywhere. But today, <laughs> it's a sunny, gorgeous day in Chicago, and um, I'm pleased to be inside here at our studios. Now, you know what? We are all pleased to be here uh, in the studios. And if you happen to be driving on the road, wherever you may be in this beautiful city of ours, the city of Chicago, keep it locked in 820 a.m. 820 a.m. If you're in the backyard enjoying this beautiful weather or if you're on your deck, if you happen to be on the porch or you're cruising or, or just chilling in the garage, ladies and gentlemen, you got your computer, you got your smartphone. Hey, Facebook Live, streaming live, 820 a.m., the Rewind Sports 6 0 Either one, check us out, streaming live, Facebook Live. And, of course, ladies and gentlemen, he is the marvelous one. He is our basketball guru, knows a little bit about baseball as well. He's the one, he's the only, he's the marvelous one, Dan Marver. How are you, Danny? Great to be here, Jerry. Um, I wanted to mention that that, uh, that Marty may have some trouble on Dundee Road for the next six months since it's under construction, but he should be everywhere else. Is it? <laughs> Thanks for the update. Yeah, it's, clo- it, it's closed from Skokie Road to Waukegan. Is it? Is yeah. it the next six months? Yeah, right. They're redoing a, an intersection of Lee and Dundee. So oh my goodness! Everybody in the audience, stay away from there. Yeah, don't go on the detour I'm taking. Yeah, well, wherever, wherever you may be, <laughs> wherever you may be driving, wherever you may be going, please drive safely and and get there safe and sound. My little one, uh, Alicia, uh, it was great to see her this weekend for the Easter uh, Sunday Easter weekend, and she's heading back to the University of Illinois, Champaign, or Banner. She's actually on the bus right now heading back. So, And I told her, I said, hey, young lady, you better make sure you tune in to the Rewind Sports 60. You got your smartphone. You get your Facebook. It's the Rewind Sports 60. The Rewind Sports 60. Or, of course, you can check us out on WCPT820.com. Whatever the case may be, may be the little one, how are you? Good to see you. Love you. Have a safe trip back to the University of Illinois. And all the students heading back to to school, whether you go to the U of I, whether you go to Northwestern, wherever you may be, head back home or head back to school safely. Yes. I echo those sentiments, Jerry. And you know, I know we're going to talk about this a little bit later in the show, but 
Uh, you mentioning uh, one of your lovely daughters. Well, actually, both of your daughters are at Illinois. Mm-hmm. Uh, couldn't help but uh, think the other day when I heard that in the last month of his life, Chet Kopic had an opportunity uh, to give his daughter away. Yeah, yeah. That actually, was. just a, a, a couple months ago, I believe. Just recently. Very recently. About a month right. or two ago, he actually, yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, we'll certainly get an opportunity to reflect on uh, the beautiful life the incredible life of one Chet Kopik, the godfather of sports here in the city of Chicago. But before we do that, let's introduce him. Ladies and gentlemen, he's the one. He's the only. He's the Italian stallion. He's D.C. He's Danny Carlino on our TR60 hotline. What's up, D.C.? Hi, Jerry. Hi, uh, Dan. Hi, Marty. Uh, so, uh, Dan Marver, so I didn't, when will we start doing traffic reports on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> Well, he said, if, as long as you live in that exclusive area of the uh, northern suburbs of the greatest city in the world, Chicago, Illinois, he's got to give you the traffic updates and let you know the detours around that area. Fair enough. So you said six months, so that means about ten months, right? Yeah, it's, the <laughs> sign says October 31st, believe it if you will. I, 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 I'm not... Uh, your <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been taking the uh, the alternate route, um, that, of course, Lake Cook Road, just to the north of, of Dundee Road, uh, once you get off the Edens Expressway, and... Uh, I'm with you, marvelous one. I don't want anyone to find out my my, my secret uh, passageway as far as getting to and from the city of Chicago to the suburbs in the north. Danny, how are you? I'm doing well. It's a nice. I mean, I was in studio last week. Thank goodness. I'm, I'm outside today. I, if I hadn't been able to make it in studio last week, I don't think I'd have been calling from outside though. <laughs> so this is a beautiful change. There you go. It certainly the is. It's been resurrected as well. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, you know what? We're glad to hear your beautiful voice on our TR60 hotline, and we'll get a chance to pick your brain as as far as what's happened in the past week in this uh, world of sports. But we have to say, um, this dedication, this show is dedicated to the memory of one Chet Kopic, Chester Kopic, the man on sports, Kopic on sports, who just uh, passed away earlier part of this past week from injuries sustained in an auto accident that took place in Hilton Head, South Carolina last week. And uh, I can say that uh, in my time being in this industry and being in this, this business, you come across all sorts and you, you meet all types, um, good, bad, and indifferent. You have some great, great individuals in the sports community as far as the media is concerned here in Chicago. Uh, but Chet Kopic, definitely, no question about it, was the pioneer who launched many, many careers uh, as far as sports is concerned, and, may, and, and out, outside of sports as well. But he is, is one gentleman who many who are currently working on the airways, whether it's radio or television, who certainly owe their careers to Chet Kopic because he was the original one who actually began doing talk radio here in the city of Chicago. And I can remember way back in the day, I mentioned the University of Illinois, but I can remember back in the uh, mid to late 80s, I was down in Champaign-Urbana working at WICD Channel 15 and WLRW, the FM station down there. And it was a pleasure for me to get an opportunity to turn on the radio, believe it or not, and get a chance to listen to Chet Kopic do his sports shows all the way down from uh, in Champaign-Urbana. And, and, and he was an inspiration for sure. And he was definitely an entertainer. He was definitely a character, but he was definitely a professional. And, you know, as, as our good friend Barry Rodner, Rosner wrote in his piece in the Chicago Daily Herald, he said, love him or hate him, Chet Kopic didn't care one way or the other, but he wanted to, you to react to what he had to say. And he, quite, he was definitely, definitely a, a great individual. Uh, and he certainly will be missed. Danny Carlino, your reflections on the great Chet Kopic. We just actually had him on the air about a year or so ago on the other station that we were on, and, of course, broadcasting from Sarah Nello's Restaurant Day in, in Wheeling. He joined us as well on the phone. But uh, your reflection as far as what uh, Chet Kopic meant to you and what you felt when you heard the unfortunate sad news. You know, I, it's, um, I never had the pleasure of meeting him in person. I probably saw him here and there in passing at certain events, but never actually met him. Only got to actually converse with him. Thanks to you for having him on a handful of times since we've been uh, doing the show together. Um, you know, and he was the way I always knew him, watching him on TV or listening on the radio as a, as a fan. And, you know, as a kid who was always interested in sports and eventually wanted to kind of be in, the, in this field, you know, he was one of the first ones. For me, if the first sports guys were him and uh, Tim Weigel. Those were the first guys you, you knew of, and, uh, and now they're both gone. Uh, Weigel being gone for quite some time now, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Um, 
So, you know, whether you always liked them or you kind of somewhere in between, I mean, when the, the first guys that were kind of an example of something you wanted to get into are always going to stick in your memory. And, and like I said, when we had him on the show, he was the same way he was when I was watching Channel 5 newscasts when I was five years old and stuff like that. So, um, And some people thought maybe it was an act or it was hokey and – I don't think it was an act, and it may have been hokey, but it was consistent. And the one thing you could always say that uh, he never did anything halfway. If he was going to do it, he was going to do it, and and it was going to be Chet Kopic the way everyone saw him. You know, so that's the, you like consistency. That's that's at least you can ask from somebody. You definitely got that from Chet. You certainly did, Dan Marvelous yeah. Marver. You know, it's interesting. I, I had to politics because he sat at the end of my aisle for a while. Oh, really? And uh, he he liked to talk to everybody, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And he, he would chat me up a bit, and uh, and he was very polite when I passed by, you know, and uh, and whatnot. I remember one incident actually where he he was talking to strangers so much that he actually got uh, got punched. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that story. Yeah, years of course. Ago. Yes. But uh, <laughs> but uh, he he was uh, one of a kind, no question about it. And I mean, I think that was it. Uh, Bruce Wolf did the, the chat 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 the yeah. mimic of him yeah yeah, yeah. So, chat chat yeah. <laughs> so I mean that's that's an honor when somebody mimics you that, sure. that's like that's like a real a real reward. The man on the street, Marty B. Your oh. thoughts on the great chat topic, the Godfather of sports here in Chicago? Oh, Jerry and Dan, I uh, and uh, Dan, I just have uh, <laughs> such a, a, a a number of just marvelous memories of him. Um, I just. Felt the world of him. Did have a chance to meet him one time, quite by accident, at a Bulls game. Is, yeah, of course. He came over and started a conversation with me. Is that right? Well, yeah, we were outside. I forget the exact setting, but uh, he said, oh, wow. Hey, Martin, you're here at a Bulls game, huh? Mm-hmm. Sitting in a good seat. Well, he, he, he really razzed me. Is that right? Boy, he said, you arrived, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. He was a very engaging personality. Yeah. He really, he really caught me off guard. Yeah. But um, I was always a fan of his. Um, I didn't really uh, um, pay attention, maybe because I didn't always watch Channel 5. I would move around. But I didn't realize that he had quite a career on uh, Channel 5 as a sports commentator in the evening. Oh, really? I didn't realize that. Yeah. This was all brought to my attention the last couple of days. But when I really became a uh, an avid listener was Copic on Sports. Exactly. Oh, exactly. But as I understand, he, as much as he enjoyed doing that and the post-game tele, uh, broadcasts on Notre Dame football, he really liked that gig at Channel 5. He certainly did. And he did that for about three and a half years until he was unfortunately, uh, depending on how you look at it, he was uh, unfortunately let go because Chet Copic... Uh, and, and Mark Gian Greco, who is currently, obviously, as we well know, over at ABC uh, uh, 7 right now doing sports, and he's uh, definitely a legend here in the Chicagoland area as well. He worked at NBC Channel 5 as well, and he said that uh, the last straw for uh, sp- uh, the NBC management over at uh, Channel 5 was Chet Kopic would only have four pages of, of sports, and it was pretty much the intro, and then he'd ad-libbed everything else. Well, the unfortunate thing for Chet, because of his enthusiasm, his love, and his knowledge, and his en- engaging personality, and uh, his, his knack for entertaining, he would always go over. As you well know, sports you know, gets limited time. Uh, why? Because of network programming. And what happened was Chet Kopic went too long, and he had gone too long too many times, and it cut into Johnny Carson. And, of course, you cannot do that. And Johnny Carson during that time was, and, and you know, he was the man. He was late-night television. And when, when Chet Kopic did that, that was pretty much the final straw, and it was all she wrote. So, you know, it, 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 those days are gone, that's for sure. Uh, and and uh, those were very, very unique days and golden days as far as television and as far as sports television broadcasting here in the city of Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, keep it locked in. This is the Rewind Sports 60. Yours truly, Jerry Riles. Marty B., the man on the street, the marvelous one, Dan Marver. And on our TR60 hotline, Danny Carlino, the Italian Stallion. When we come back, we'll continue to reflect on the great life of Chet Coppock, but we'll also talk a little baseball regarding our Chicago White Sox. Keep it locked in. If you want to join in, our number is 773-763-9278, 773-763-WCPT. You've got the Rewind Sports 60. Lock it in.
It's the end of the quarter. Time for a break in the action. The hottest sports panel in Chicago will get back to the fast-paced action, streaming live on Facebook Live. We're back at it after this quick timeout, so don't you dare touch that iPhone, Android, iPad, Mac, or PC. Lock it in. This portion of the Rewind Sports 60 is brought to you by the Liquor Barn. Liquor Barn. They are friends of the program. From beers to spirits and champagne, the Liquor Barn is your libation destination for parties, banquets, weddings, and more. Weddings and, more. and don't forget to mark your calendars for the annual Wine Fest this fall. The Liquor Barn is located on the corner of Dundee and Milwaukee Avenue in Wheeling, 287 East Dundee Road. And their Niles location is 8170 West Golf Road. Feel free to drop by and say hello. And always remember to drink responsibly. Drink responsibly. Right now, Doctors Without Borders medical teams are operating in some of the most remote and dangerous corners of the world. When front yards become front lines, when disaster erupts, when disease rages, when communities collapse under crisis, at the crossroads of conflict and epidemic, where there are no hospitals, that's where we operate. We go where conditions are the worst because that's where we're needed most. In nearly 70 countries, we're saving lives threatened by violence, disease, malnutrition, and catastrophic events. Donors are vital to our mission. Your response is critical to our response in places where a few others will go. That's where we operate. Learn more at doctorswithoutborders.org. Hi, this is Liz Nicholson Sullivan, the wife of former NFL player Jerry Sullivan. I am asking you to support House Bill number 4341, the Dave Duerson Act to prevent CTE, which bans tackle football for Illinois children under 12. CTE is a brain disease that can be caused by playing football. Its symptoms include dementia, depression, and aggression. Dave Duerson committed suicide when CTE began destroying his life. I am now watching my husband Jerry struggle against CTE. The best way to prevent this disease is to stop hitting kids in the head. Tackle football exposes young children with developing brains to hundreds of head hits each year. Show your support for House Bill 4341 or hashtag Act. Together we can save football players from CTE. And please go to concussionlegacy.com for more information. Thank you. If it's Chicago sports you want, you're in the right place. Hello, Chicago! The Rewind Sports 60. That's the best in the city of Chicago. Welcome back to the Rewind Sports 60 live with the best sports panel in Chicago. Lock it in. Welcome back to the Rewind Sports 60 on WCPT 820 AM broadcasting. On the north side, Jefferson Park in the beautiful city of Chicago. Happy Easter. Passover to all of you out there who are listening in. We love to have you contribute. Our number is 773-763-9278. 773-763-WCPT. Joined in studio by the man on the street, Marty B. And, of course, the marvelous one, Dan Marver. On our TR60 hotline, he's the one, he's the only, he's the Italian stallion, Danny Carlino. If you have any thoughts or comments about the great Czech Copic, may he rest in peace. Understand there's going to be a memorial service, uh, details to follow. But... He is certainly and definitely will be missed. And it's interesting because I certainly uh, once we've only been here maybe at WCPT, the studios for a little more than a month, I believe. And he was on my my list uh, to call to, 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 to join us and, and talk sports, of course. Uh, he is certainly uh, he was certainly a friend of the program and uh, he certainly will be missed. There was another uh, story that took place and broke this past week. And it involved our Chicago White Sox and the great, uh, the great young shortstop Tim Anderson, and he has been crushing the ball. He has certainly been destroying the ball. At one point, particular time, the first ten games of this baseball season, folks, he had been batting over 500, 515. Everything that came his way, he was crushing it, and he's still playing uh, superb baseball, batting in the uh, the mid to upper 
400 right now as far as his batting average is concerned. He's uh, seemed to have tried to uh, lock in or lock down his defensive uh, you know, a, a approach to the game, and he has certainly become the early leader in the clubhouse for the Chicago White Sox. Well, the Kansas City Royals were in town this past week, and the White Sox uh, doing pretty good b business as far as their, their record is concerned. Not yet 500, but uh, they, uh, Ricky Renneria has this young core of players fighting and scrapping and, and, and playing till the end. Unfortunately, they took it on the chin earlier uh, on Easter Sunday, 4-3, uh, to three, but they refuse to give up, and they fight, and they battle, and they get after it. Well, this past Wednesday over at the Guaranteed Rate Field, they were battling, they were fighting, and literally the benches cleared. Tim Anderson with a two-run homer in the ball game off of Brad Keller. Once he crushed the ball, took his bet, threw it toward the White Sox dugout, looking at them, gesturing, and said, come on, guys, let's go. Well, as the game of baseball has it, the unwritten rule is you can't show up a pitcher. Next time Timmy Anderson got up to the plate, what happened? Mr. Keller unloads one, fires it at him, hits him in the rear end. Timmy didn't like it. Maldonado, the catcher, tried to get in between the two, the pitcher and, 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 and Tim Anderson. Everything kind of like we thought was order was restored. Ricky Renneria got into it with Del Swain, and, you know, it got a little bit hectic over there at Guarantee Rayfield. Well, they ended up getting ejected. Ricky Renneria, of course, he's first time this year, but I think it's the 20th time since he's been the manager. Timmy Anderson gets tossed out. Keller gets tossed out. I think Del Swain or whatever gets tossed out as well. Well, there was no explanation at the end of the game why these individuals were, were tossed out. Typically, you usually get a warning. Both benches, both managers, the pitcher, whatever, they get warnings because there were no punches thrown or anything like that. Joe West was the umpire who tossed everybody. Well, it finally came out that allegedly... Allegedly, during a verbal exchange, Tim Anderson said to Brad Keller, the Kansas City pitcher, hey, you stop throwing that effing stuff, you in. He called Brad Keller the N-word. He called him the N-word. Now, for those of you who don't know, Brad Keller is Caucasian, a white man. And for and for and for Timmy Anderson to call him the N-word, and evidently Joe West heard it and say, "You can't use that type of vulgarity, that type of language. You're out of here." Baseball handed down a one-game suspension, five-game suspension to Keller. Marty, you got a look on your face. Marty B, your thoughts. Well, you know, Jerry, and I learned this early on. The that N-word is applicable to all races, creeds, colors, nationalities. And, but it was still, it's an inappropriate word to be used under any circumstances. But I did not know that, Jerry. Thank you for sharing that on the show. Yeah, it, it, you know, it, well, no one really knew it. Um, and he, basically, he, he said to Keller, you're a weak effing N-word. You're a weak effing N-word, is what Tim Anderson labeled Brad Keller, the pitcher for the Kansas City Royals. And you're right, Marty B. It's, it's interesting. It's different from what um, we grew up in. We'll get a chance to talk about... Uh, the boycott or the, uh, you know, what's going on with the New York Yankees and the Philadelphia Flyers as far as Kate Smith's uh, version of a song. Uh, she Incidentally, she's saying God Bless America, but there's a version, there's a song that uh, she had back in the 1930s, 39 or so, that uh, has racial overtones in it as well. But at one particular time, the N-word, it was definitely offensive. But it seems like, and Danny Carlino, we'd love to get your, um, we'll get to your perspective on this. The N word today, with this new generation, this young generation, we talk about these, the, the 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 young generation in baseball, how they say let the kids play, and the kids are playing, whether they're, you know, flipping their bats, throwing their bats, or they're staring at a home run, or whatever they're doing when they're, you know, uh, playing in the field. They say let the kids be kids. Well, this generation now, they use the N word very loosely. And it doesn't just apply to African Americans or, or, or minorities, as you stated, Marty B. It applies yeah. to it's 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 a term that applies to anyone who is being negative, so to speak. And that's what Timmy Anderson labeled Brad Keller when he hit him with the pitch. Danny Carlino, your thoughts? Well, I'll start off with what kind of precipitated it—the whole bat flip from the home run on the fourth inning. Now, it's more in vogue. You know, the people are putting. Uh, I don't know if it's gifts or gifs or, or you know, even MLB is promoting it in a way. They, they are and they aren't. It's kind of it's kind of strange. 
And what bothered me is it didn't look as much like a celebratory kind of bat flip as more of a, an angry bat chuck kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, here, and, and, and here's the one thing. I mean, I never played Little League Baseball, but I had friends who did. I mean, I, did you guys play Little League Baseball? Of course. I was the king. Yeah, well, I was, I was well, Tim Anderson. I was batting all, over 500. I really well, was. was. I believe you. What, what, <laughs> what was the first rule of Little League Baseball? <laughs> Don't throw your bat. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, I, I remember even just playing as a kid. We'd maybe played softball or something in gym class or something. And they say, if you throw your bat, you're automatically out. Yeah, that's so true. We, so now, how old is Tim Anderson? Was like 25, something like that? 26? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if we could, we, I would hope we could expect a 26-year-old to behave at least as well as a 7-year-old, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's a different situation when we when you when we play little league and they said don't don't sling your bat. That was because of you know you didn't want to injure anybody. You wanted to, to protect the kids that were in the bench or whatever. So that's what they were told. You know, lay your bat down, not to sling your bat. That was because of protection. Now these are professional athletes. They're making millions of dollars, and it's you know they're speeding up the game. Danny Carlino changing rules, and now they want more entertainment. They want more excitement, and these kids they're like, hey, this is what the game is about. I get to flip my bat. I get to throw my – because Timmy Anderson, he was basically saying, hey, he said, I'm not going to change the way that I play this game. I'm not going to change the way I approach this game. And he was trying to spark his teammates up because they were – you know, Kansas City was giving them the business. And, and Tim Anderson, you know, that two-run pop that he, he, he hit, he was trying to light up his teammates and fire them up. And, again, Ricky Renneria has these guys saying, hey, you know what? We're going to play till the last strike in this baseball game, the last out. And, and this White Sox team, to their credit, that appears to be exactly what they're doing. Marvelous one. Your thoughts? Yeah, well, you know, as it turned out, uh, the MLB officially said that it was conduct after the bench was cleared per Joe Torre in a statement Friday announcing the discipline. Now, with the rainout yesterday, notice that Anderson played today. Mm-hmm. So his one-game suspension meant that he didn't miss a game. And, and that's good. He's, right. He's leading the league in hitting. Yes. 422. He's, he's crushing the yeah, ball. So, I mean, it, I would have thought that they might have made him sit out today, but he sat out the rain out. <laughs> well, yeah, he, they, he has no control over that. Yeah. And he was sitting out that game, and he said yeah. he wasn't going to uh, appeal it or anything. So he, he didn't so miss a thing. He didn't miss a thing at all. We don't want you to miss a thing either. Keep okay. it locked in. WCPT, 820 AM. Our number is 773-763-9278. 773-763-WCPT. We come back. We'll continue to talk some Tim Anderson, White Sox baseball. We can also talk Czech Kopic if you have something to, to chime in about some memories of Chet Kopik, and of course we'll get to the controversy surrounding the late Kate Smith and her song. This is the Rewind Sports 60. We got a TR60 scoreboard coming up with the marvelous one, Marty B. I mean, excuse me, the Dan Marvel, Marvelous. We'll do it together. <laughs> TR60 Sports Update. This TRS60 scoreboard update is sponsored by Monster Education Foundation. David Bote's walk-off RBA single in the bottom of the ninth lifted the Cubs to a 2-1 win over the visiting Arizona Diamondbacks over at Wrigley. Javi Baez jump-started the rally with a leadoff double, which was uh, advancing to third and an error during the play. Tyler Chatwood pitched a superb six strong innings with three strikeouts in the win. Joe Madden's boys welcomed the L.A. Dodgers to town for a three-game set this week. The White Sox follow the Tigers in Detroit 4-3 at Comerica Park. Daniel Norris struck out six Sox hitters on his way to retiring 10 of his final 11 batters for the win. Lurie Garcia and Tim Anderson collected RBI singles in the eighth, but it wasn't enough. Rinaldo Lopez picked up the loss. The Sox head to Baltimore for a three-game set. In the NBA playoffs, the Golden State Warriors defeated the L.A. Clippers 113-105 to take a 3-1 lead, and the Boston Celtics completed their sweep of the Pacers 110-106. Tonight, the Raptors play the Magic, and the Trailblazers play the Thunder. And in the NHL playoffs... The uh, Boston Bruins defeated Toronto 4-2 to force a Game 7, and tonight Vegas plays San Jose. The TRS-60 scoreboard update is sponsored by Monster Education Foundation. MEFs, empowering the next generation of leaders. Go to MonsterEducationFoundation.org to learn more. The end of the quarter. Time for a break of the action. The hottest sports panel in Chicago will get back to the fast-paced action, streaming live on Facebook Live. We're back at it after this quick timeout, so don't you dare touch that iPhone, Android, iPad, Mac, or PC. Lock it in. 
This portion of the Rewind Sports 60 is brought to you by the Liquor Barn. Liquor Barn. They are friends of the program. From beers to spirits and champagne, the Liquor Barn is your libation destination for parties, banquets, weddings, and more. Weddings and, more. and don't forget to mark your calendars for the annual Wine Fest this fall. The Liquor Barn is located on the corner of Dundee and Milwaukee Avenue in Wheeling, 287 East Dundee Road. And their Niles location is 8170 West Golf Road. Feel free to drop by and say hello. And always remember to drink responsibly. Drink responsibly. Just now, another kid dropped out of school. There's one every 20 seconds. If we do nothing, 3.5 million kids won't receive a diploma over the next four years. But there is someone who can change that. You. United Way knows that kids who have a caring adult in their life are more likely to make it. So make a pledge. Tutor. Mentor, volunteer to read with children. And the difference between a dropout and a graduate could be you. Take the pledge to volunteer now at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in Illinois is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, it just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the Illinois High School Association and the Illinois Athletic Directors Association. If it's Chicago sports you want, you're in the right place. Hello, Chicago! The Rewind Sports 60. That's the best in the city of Chicago. Welcome back to the Rewind Sports 60 Live with the best sports panel in Chicago. Lock it in. You guys, you guys, you were talking to Maldonado as you were kind of coming out of the box. Yeah. Did, did, he, did he say anything in particular? I mean, it seemed like it was. Uh, I don't know. It was a heated moment. So, yeah. you know, I was kind of blocking out everything. Were you, were you stunned that you were thrown out? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I don't. I didn't kind of understand what happened. Uh, but I, but I understood what, you know, what was going on and uh, why they threw both of us out. Do you, do you do a little history now? with, with West though? You do have a little history with him too. Do you think that played into it? Uh, I don't know. I don't think about that. I don't think about that, man. Like I said, I go uh, day by day, and uh, you know, the past is in the past, so we move forward. Do you, do you understand why now you were ejected? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. Uh, but it's you know, part of the game, I guess. Did we do now, Timmy. You're bad. You're bad at your we know now. Yeah. I mean, isn't that kind of confusing? Why they be offended by that? Uh, I don't know. Man. I don't know. It's you know, it's different. It's different, I guess. Uh, but uh, like I said, I'm gonna continue to be me and uh, keep having fun, man. You know, these our fans. You know, they pay a hard earned money to come come to the to the ballpark to uh, you know see a show. So why not give them one? You got that right, Tim Anderson, the shortstop for your Chicago White Sox. Welcome back to the Rewind Sports 60 on WCPT 8:20 a.m. Yours truly, Jerry Riles, along with Danny Carlino, the Italian stallion, on our TR60 hotline in studio. The marvelous one, Dan Marver, and of course the man on the street, Marty B. Those on the the Line, please feel free. We'll hold. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll get to you in a moment. But if you're just tuning into your cars, if you're just checking us out on Facebook Live, whether it's on the Rewind Sports 60 or WCPT 820, we're talking Tim Anderson, who was suspended by Major League Baseball for using a racial slur toward the Kansas City Royals pitcher Brad Keller this past week over at Guarantee Rate Field. Called him the N word. You in? You weak? F A N. You can't pitch. You hit me in the butt. I'm not going to change anymore. <laughs> if you want to join in, if you have any comments, those were the words of Tim Anderson uh, after the game, after being ejected. said he didn't know why he was tossed. He didn't have any idea why he was tossed. Well, Joe West tossed him because of the alleged uh, racial slur that he hurled at Brad Keller, the Kansas City Royals. Also, in the news controversy in baseball and sports, and many of us didn't know anything about this. Marty B., the man on the street, marvelous Marver in studio, of course. And this just came out. The Philadelphia Flyers uh, decided to cover up a statue of Kate Smith, the legendary, incomparable, outstanding singing voice, Kate Smith. You guys heard a 
God bless America, a lot of baseball games around uh, the country and even, you know, sporting events, of course, hockey and, and, and some, uh, some football stadiums. But Kate Smith, allegedly, 1939, sang a song that was racially insensitive and the New York Yankees organization finally realized that there was a song out there that Kate Smith sang and it was very, very uh, derogatory, racial overtones, racial overtones, the title of the song, That's Why Darkies Were Born. Marty B, That's Why Darkies Were Born, back in 1939. The Yankees are investigating these claims, and they are some conflicting notions regarding the song. That's why darkies were born, in particular, because it was considered satire at the time and recorded with African-American artist Paul Robeson. Still, her shocking lyrics from 1939 are neither humorous nor ironic in 2019. And the Yankees, well, they acted swiftly. They are not playing God Bless America anymore at Yankee Stadium, and they're going to play another rendition of it. Marty, you have an astonishing look on your face after hearing this <laughs> this terrible, terrible story. Your, your thoughts? Well, first of all, Jerry, I'm flabbergasted. Uh, astounded probably is a better word. Uh, maybe uh, very upset is the best word. Uh, I grew up with Kate Smith. To me, she represented patriotism in America, especially for a young man growing up. And um, her she did so much with regards to the troops, personal appearances, that I know for a fact never, ever was paid a dime for. I know this for a fact. Oh, really? She loved America. She raised over $2 million back in the 1930s for the, uh, the war and the troops and everything, which is, which is amazing. Absolutely. Which is I, amazing, especially during that time. I can't imagine having her. For, obviously, she sang this song. But I cannot imagine Kate Smith having any malice in her heart. I just can't imagine it. You know what? It's an unfortunate situation, Marty B. Uh, it, it was a sign of the times back during that day. That was the, 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 the thought process. That was the culture. Uh, many people didn't find it offensive. But, of course, if you're African-American and you're just clearing out, you know, slavery, you just <laughs> slavery removed a generation or two prior, you know, for the most part, it, it, very, very offensive. But back during that time, it, you know, there were still a lot of uh, people there uh, living in this country that s just simply didn't want to embrace the freedom of blacks during that time. And, of course, we see the song. It was written. It was sang. It was produced. And, you know, there you have it. Danny Carlino, your thoughts real quick before we go to the phone lines. Well, I mean, it, it's an interesting thing that, uh, I mean, even you think even 80 years ago, I know times change, but that's, it was reading the lyrics. It's kind of <laughs> uh, you say undertones. I don't know about undertones, but um, yes, again, exactly. we, we don't know the con we don't know the context of why the song was written and the, who it was performed with and why it was performed. I don't want to say one way or the other because I don't know. But I just find it. I mean, have you been to the Bronx? I haven't, but I mean, it doesn't have the. It's a rough, it's a rough place. The Yankees fans are always look. They're not exactly always the nicest folks, and and Philadelphia. I mean, these people boo Santa Claus and they cheer career-ending injuries. They're offended by something. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, it, it, the juxtaposition about the teams and, and, and the, the, the kind of the reputation of the two teams is kind of funny as far as what's offensive and not offensive. I mean, you can have the same reason why some people think what Tim Anderson said and who he is and who he said it to, it's different. Yeah, it is different, but obviously professional organizations do not want to be associated with this kind of language, whether it's last week uh, from a black guy or 80 years ago from from a white woman. There they you don't go. want to be associated with it, and that's it. Marvelous one, real quick, before we go to the phone lines. Right, quickly. Um, it, it, I think it was uh, showing in 1931. I mean, uh, it's kind of like the Confederate statues argument to me in yeah. a way. It's a long mm -hmm. time ago. I mean, it does say someone had to, had to be slave and able to sing. That's why darkies were born, you know, and the, if someone had to pick the cotton, someone had to pick the corn. I don't know the context either, but obviously um, it was a different culture then, of course, too. I mean, and it was 70 years after after Lincoln died. So, I mean, there's a lot of – it's hard to imagine that, that she had ill will, but uh, – We'll never know, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, what, what, it's, it's, it's just, well, it, 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 it's amazing to me that it took till 2019 for it to be realized uh, that she sang. Because, I mean, we have all great uh, vocalists, entertainers or whatever that we've grown up with and we love and we know all of their songs. So it's amazing to me that it took a uh, sports franchise or anyone 
uh, you know, to 2019 to figure this thing out. Let's go out to the phone lines. Ed has been holding patiently. Ed, welcome to the Rewind Sports 60. What are your thoughts? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. I grew up as a Brooklyn Dodger fan, and my perception uh, started to mold uh, at the end of Jackie's career. Jackie Robinson's career mm -hmm. and Hank Aaron and the color uh, barrier, thank God, was broken. And yeah. As tribute to Chet, uh, his on the air delivery, I thought, was nothing short of super. And he was, I mean, people driving down the street and maybe listening to the his sports reports on the half hour at the uh, real successful country music station here in there in Chicago. Mm. Uh, I mean, people driving the street down the street, maybe not even interested in sports. He, Chet, you, Chet's on the air for two minutes, and I'll bet they don't switch the dial. Yeah, yeah. Chet was the best. You're dying your dance floor, baby. He's the best, no question about it. Yes, and uh, as far as the game, I he. Anything from wrestling, um, baseball, football, basketball, hockey. I mean, the man's mind was like uh, a steel trap. Uh, his memory was outstanding. You know, the president CEO of uh, the Chicago Blackhawks, John McDonough, we heard him earlier. Uh, he was on another station w with an interview. He said, Chet Kopic's mind, and we appreciate your, your call, uh, and thank you so very much. He said, and Marty B., you can attest to this before we go to a short time out here. He said that Chet Kopic's mind was like, an, uh, he was a walking encyclopedia. He said he, he, was a, he was a walking computer before we started walking with these smartphone <laughs> devices. But Chet Kopic was, and he was, he was proud, he was, he was bold, he was boisterous and he simply didn't give a damn. And that's one reason why I love Chad Coppe. He didn't give a damn because, you know, it's an ego-driven industry that we're a part of, and you want everyone to like you and 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 watch you and listen to you and be a part of you. Chad Coppe, he said, hey, man, I'm giving you the story. I'm giving you the facts as the best as I know it. And that's just how it is. He was a showman. Whether he had on all the flashy bling, 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 whether he had the long mink uh, fur coat on, Chad Coppe was the man, and he was certainly beloved, and he certainly will be missed. We're going to take a short time out here at WCPT. And again, those of you holding on the hotline, if you're holding up, please be patient. We're coming back to you. We'd love to get your thoughts. Keep it locked in. This is the Rewind Sports 60. Yours truly, Jerry Riles. Marty B., the man on the street. The marvelous one, Dan Marver on our TR60 hotline. Dan, Danny Carlino, the Italian stallion. More sports and the man on the street coming up right after this short time out. Lock it in. It's the end of the quarter. Time for a break in the action. The hottest sports panel in Chicago will get back to the fast-paced action, streaming live on Facebook Live. We're back at it after this quick timeout. So don't you dare touch that iPhone, Android, iPad, Mac, or PC. Lock it in. This portion of the Rewind Sports 60 is brought to you by the Liquor Barn. Liquor Barn. They are friends of the program. From beers to spirits and champagne, the Liquor Barn is your libation destination for parties, banquets, weddings, and more. Weddings and, more. and don't forget to mark your calendars for the annual Wine Fest this fall. The Liquor Barn is located on the corner of Dundee and Milwaukee Avenue in Wheeling, 287 East Dundee Road. And their Niles location is 8170 West Golf Road. Feel free to drop by and say hello. And always remember to drink responsibly. Drink responsibly. Just now, another kid dropped out of school. There's one every 20 seconds. If we do nothing, 3.5 million kids won't receive a diploma over the next four years. But there is someone who can change that. You. United Way knows that kids who have a caring adult in their life are more likely to make it. So make a pledge. Tutor. Mentor, volunteer to read with children. And the difference between a dropout and a graduate could be you. Take the pledge to volunteer now at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. 
Hi, I'm Liz Nicholson Sullivan. As the wife of a nine-year NFL veteran suffering the long-term effects of untreated and undiagnosed head injuries, I know how dangerous concussions can be. The Concussion Legacy Foundation is a nonprofit dedicated to keeping kids safe in sports. Their Team Up Speak Up program teaches kids to speak up to a coach or athletic trainer if they think their teammate might have a concussion. Whether you're a parent, coach, or athlete, you can make a difference. Join me and sign up at teamupspeakup.org. Welcome back to the Rewind Sports 60 Live with the best sports panel in Chicago. Lock it in. Call your sons, call your daughters, call your friends, call your neighbors. you got to be bleeping me. Yes! 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 Rewind Sports 60 is brought to you by Serenello's Ristorante Italiano. Inspired by his travels and passion for Italy's culture, executive chef Michael Bonner has created a broad menu of Italian fare utilizing the freshest ingredients to create the fullest flavors to bring homemade, handcrafted pizzas and pastas, as well as prime steaks and fresh fish dishes to the table. Feel the energy while dining in a casual and rustic setting. Dine at natural, reclaimed wood tables surrounded by inviting darker woods, exposed brick and beams, subtle filament lighting, and accented with muted chocolate and caramel tones throughout, an impressive 50-foot bar lines, an entire wall with seating for all, the perfect place to relax, eat and drink with your family and friends. Serenello's, Re- Serenello's Restaurant the Italiano is located at 601 North Milwaukee Avenue in Wheeling. Tell them the Rewind Sports 60 told you to stop by. Man, I'm hungry right now. Hope you had a chance to go over to Sierra Nolos in Wheeling and, and check out the Sunday brunch. Man, Chef Michael Bonner, they lay it down thick over there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Rewind Sports 60, the fastest hour in sports conversation. Yours truly, Jerry Riles. That was the marvelous one, Dan Marver. Of course, in studio, the man on the street, Marty B. And on our TR60 hotline, he is the one, the only Italian stallion. He's Danny Carlino. Before we go to the man on the street, let's go out to our phones and pick it up with George, who's been waiting patiently over over there on the north, on the, I think it's the south side. George, how are you, buddy? What's up, Jerry? How are you? Listen, I, I want to tell people that's listening to WCPT. Now, Jet Cop, Jet did wonderful, wonderful things, but in the same category, a guy that gave me my start and many other people's start at the score was yours truly, Jerry Wiles. And I don't want to embarrass you, Jerry, but you taught me more about just simple things like switching the songs doing the right things on the microphone, it's learning how to put a cart into a machine. I mean, it, it sounds trivial, but you taught me a lot. I just want you to know I don't forget you. I listen to you. I follow your show. The show is fabulous, and you're on a great station. And, you know, Chet Koppik's a great one, but 20 years from now, God forbid, if something happens, you're going to be remembered as the greatest trainer of my friend, my family, my son, a couple of my other buddies, and you guys are doing great. And look, look what you've done for Danny Carlino. You made him the Italian stallion, right? <laughs> He's the Italian stallion, that's for sure. Hey, George, thank you so yeah. very much for those kind words. I appreciate it. Yeah, and that friendship <laughs> goes on for forever. You, you are a unique and, and special human being in my life and my family's life. And uh, I love you and your, your, your family as well. But the one oh, thing wow. one thing we have to be aware of, a lot of the listening audience, uh, they, they and, and people in the industry, uh, carts, they don't understand what carts are. They, they think they're eight tracks. <laughs> hey, hey, George, they I think there are eight tracks that you used to stick in your car. Remember those things? I do. As a matter of fact, again, because of the history, history we are in 2019, Jerry was the absolute number one reason why Dan Jiggets and Mike North at the score, who were right behind Chet as the most famous sports guys in the history of the city, and that's not an exaggeration, it was Jerry Riles and Jesse Rogers that made that show work. So everybody listening out there, if you tune in to 820 for the first time, and God willing, you're listening on the Internet because of social media now, Jerry Riles is one of the guys right in that category with Chet Kopnick, a little younger, much better looking. And Jerry, you used to use the N-word on me all the time. You called me yeah. knucklehead. You called yeah. Knucklehead. Yeah. yeah, knucklehead. And, and no, said, no. George, no, this is the way it's done. Calm down, relax for the commercial, get ready to merge the song in. Do this, do that, and I listened. I learned, so mm. uh, it's been fabulous, Jerry. And uh, you, the show sounds great. The station is wonderful. They love having you. So uh, we'll see each other in the near future, my friend. And happy Easter to you. God love you, my friend. You're the best, George. Thank you so very much for the support, and we appreciate you. And I'll certainly see you soon. Bye, Jerry. Take care, buddy. 
Marty B., the man on the street. George, thank you. Oh, I, you echoed uh, my sentiments exactly about Jerry. I've been a big fan of his long before I even knew him. And we became reacquainted at St. Joseph the Worker Church. And thank God we did. And we're having a ball just doing everything pertaining to sports and other things. And entertainment, for sure. This is the fastest hour in sports conversation. Marty B., the man on the street. What have you learned on the street this week? Oh, my gosh. Well, there's a lot. I'm checking on three potholes around town to see if they were <laughs> fixed. That's one thing for sure. I'm going to check with those villains. Public Works Department. Well, you got to do that, of course, especially, you know, we're living in the, in the Wheeling community. We certainly got to check out that. Pat Horker, the village president, he does a fantastic job. I love the guy, and he's getting things done. But we, as far as Chicago is concerned, we got to see what the new mayor-elect, uh, Lori Lightfoot, is going to do. She's got, a, she's got a lot of work in store moving forward, and uh, if anyone can get the job done, I'm sure Lori can do it. Yes, yeah, so and my prayers every day are that uh, Governor Pritzker, Lori Lightfoot, and, of course, Tony Preckwinkle can get on the same page and get lots of things done because we certainly do need it. You, we certainly well, just do. Make sure, just make sure our, the, the mayor-elect doesn't fall in one of those potholes. We may never see her again. She's kind of diminished. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, been the, that's been the track record of our... Well, I'm on the case of three of these municipalities, and I'm going to follow up, and I'm going to drive to each one of those locations. And when the job is done... Listeners, I will report to you. Hey, Danny Carlino, the Italian Stallion. It's been said to some folks, you know, you've seen some potholes out there that are so deep that some folks have say, hey, you know what, I'm going to take some residents up there. I, you know, I got my chair and my table there. Hey, I can I can hang out here. You never know. But uh, When it fills with water, you can go fishing. <laughs> exactly. Marty B., what do you got? Well, you know, for our fight fans out there, one of the interviews that I always look forward to, and he was a frequent guest on Chet Show, was the incomparable Bert Sugar. Yeah. Yeah, and I learned more about boxing. Uh, Chet one time commented that he could go into a ring with Bert, and 200 yards away, Bert could look at a boxing match and spot a flaw 200 yards away. He certainly could. Oh, Bert he was sugar, incredible. Bert sugar tonight in your coffee. Bert sugar tonight in your tea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I oh, remember all those. Yeah. You know, I, Chet. I had the fortune to interview him one time. I got to dig up that tape. It was a fun, fun moment in Vegas, no less. Oh wow! Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh, Danny, well, you're one step ahead of me. Uh, I know we got, we're, I got to move along our show, but in addition to uh, J- Jerry, first of all, I hope that you will, we will know when that tribute to Chet is. I certainly want to be there. Yeah, sure. His uh, his his uh, lovely daughter put out a, a fantastic statement uh, proclaiming the, the the great life of Chet Kopic, and she said that there will be more uh, information to follow once they get everything squared away. Oh, wonderful! Mm. Now you mentioned earlier my dime, my dance floor, which Ooh. I use many times. Well, I like another one too. Let's do a lap around the salad bar. There you go. <laughs> that was a Chester. <laughs> you know, this particular week, uh, I had a wonderful opportunity to engage and meet, quite by accident, a driver for a very renowned trucking company, and uh, this company is located up in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Mm. And at the conclusion of our visit, he shared two very pertinent messages with me, which I'd like to share on Easter Sunday. There you go, Marty B. The first... If we meet and you forget me, you have lost nothing. But if you meet Jesus Christ and are not saved, you have lost everything. Powerful. Very much so. Powerful. And uh, my second thought on this Easter Sunday, I was once nobody, but now I am somebody. And want to tell everybody that Jesus can save anybody. He certainly can. Have a blessed Easter, and I hopefully our dear Jewish friends did not pass over, pass over, and that you commemorated this wonderful event to the fullest. Marty B., the man on the street, thank you so very much. We want to thank Danny Carlino, the Italian stallion on our TR60 hotline. Of course, the marvelous one, Dan Marber. Ladies and gentlemen, and our callers, George, Ed, for chiming in. We appreciate it. It's the fastest hour in sports conversation. We got to go. Have a fantastic week, a safe week, and we'll see you next time, next Sunday, 6 p.m., right here at WCPT, our TR60 update. TRS 60 Sports Update. This TRS 60 Scoreboard Update is sponsored by Monster Education Foundation. 
David Bodie's walk-off RBA single in the bottom of the ninth lifted the Cubs to a 2-1 win over the visiting Arizona Diamondbacks over at Wrigley. Javi Baez jump-started the rally with a leadoff double, advancing to third on an error during the play. Tyler Chatwood pitched a superb six strong innings with three strikeouts in the win. Joe Madden's boys welcomed the LA Dodgers to town for a three-game set this week. The White Sox fall to the Tigers in Detroit 4-3 at Comerica Park. Daniel Norris struck out six Sox hitters on his way to retiring 10 of his final 11 batters for the win. Lurie Garcia and Tim Anderson collected RBI singles in the eighth, but it wasn't enough. Ronaldo Lopez picked up the loss. The Sox head to Baltimore for a three-game set. In the NBA playoffs, Golden State 113, LA Clippers 105, 3-1 lead, and the Celtics swept the Pacers with a 110-106. And in the NHL, Boston 4, Toronto 2. They force a game 7. This TRS-60 scoreboard update is sponsored by Monster Education Foundation, MEF, empowering the next generation of leaders. Go to monstereducationfoundation.org to learn more. The preceding program, the Rewind Sports